Time. Time is forever present and does not stop for anyone or anything. The only things that are absolute in this life are the duration of time and the inevitable end, also known as death. Inevitability is in which something will transpire with or without your say so, and life has a brutal way of teaching us humans that lesson and the form of time. Silent Hill 2 is oftentimes hailed as one of horror's all-time greats and has been made responsible for inspiring many games such as Cry of Fear, Alan Wake, and more recently Lost in Vivo. With the remake on the horizon and online criticism being at an all-time high, I thought I'd join the conversation. With all that being said, I don't know anything about Silent Hill. Somehow I managed to stay mostly ignorant to the story and secrets behind the town of Silent Hill. So let's take a step back and dive into everything that this game has to offer. However, before diving into the meat of the video, let's first talk trivia. The first Silent Hill actually came out February 24th, 1996. For point of reference, uh, Silent Hill 2 actually came out two years later in 2001, and Silent Hill 1 was a smash hit in the USA. The game was created by Team Silent, a group of staff members within the Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo Studio. Konami sought to produce a game that would be successful in the United States, and for this reason, Silent Hill 1 carried a Hollywood-like atmosphere, something we would oftentimes see in a slasher film. Mr. Toyama, the developer and the writer of the first Silent Hill Hill was actually inspired by the tragic story of the town called Central of Pennsylvania, which had a devastating history of coal mine fires that continues to burn even until this day. And you get the gist, you know, the thick fog from the coal and it being toxic, I'm pretty sure people don't live there, creates this ghost town with a ominous smoke around it. As I said earlier, Team Silent wanted to create a smash hit within North America, creating a Hollywood atmosphere in the first Silent Hill, making it much more of a slasher film than anything else, being more visceral with the visuals and making the player feel like they're in imminent danger at all times. This obviously seems to have worked because the project up for a sequel was greenlit in 1999, though Mr. Toyama was not on this project, or at least hands on. Mr. Suboyama, the director, and Mr. Okawa, the writer, took a different stance on the creative direction of Silent Hill, that leaning more into the psychological aspect of it. Silent Hill 2 takes a step back and takes the back road and hits the players with a more of a slow burner, letting the atmosphere do the talking. Also, its narrative was inspired by a Russian novel, Crime and Punishment, in 1866. It actually has a main theme of alienation, utilitarianism, and repercussions of one actions, and going into the artistic inspiration coming from every form of media out there, from paintings to movies. Famous painters Andrew Rith and Francis Bacon's work showcasing body horror and alienation and getting most of their inspiration from the film Jacob's Ladder, where the body horror and surrealism is at an all-time high. All these creative liberties help create one of history's greatest, most influential games to affect an entire generation to come. So without further ado, Let's get into it. James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? After that banger of an intro, we meet James Sunderland as he collects himself in the mirror. I immediately get jump scared. Hold on. Uh! 
I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry. Wow. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> After collecting myself from that horrid ass jump scare, James reads a note. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. But you never did. Well, I'm alone there now. In our special place. Waiting for you. I got a letter. The name on the envelope said, Mary, my wife's name, it's ridiculous, couldn't possibly be true, that's what I keep telling myself, a dead person can't write a letter, Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then, why am I looking for her? Our special place. What could she mean? This whole town was our special place. Does she mean the park on the lake? We spent the whole day there. Just the two of us, staring at the water. Could Mary really be there? Is she really alive? Waiting for me? With that, James is off to find his deceased wife. And you know, judging by some other stories we may know about, he might actually find her. Ethan. Also, a fun fact, this game was made in Japan, obviously, and due to translation, the note changed a bit. In the original translation, Mary does not blame James, but actually blames her illness for the reason of not going back to Silent Hill, their special place. You know, food for thought. I thought it added character in the original design of the game. James runs through the forest, coming across a cemetery where a woman jump scares me again. Excuse me, I... Oh, oh, I... I'm sorry. Shit, she just I, jump scared me. I... She tells us about the town of Silent Hill and how it may or may not be dangerous, making sure to trauma dump right before we part ways. James runs into the town, not heeding her warnings, and sees bloodstains on the streets. And guess what he does? He decides to follow. Coming across a static radio and a mangled, like, human bigger thing monster... Whatever the hell it was, James beats the hell out of it. Is it dead? What the hell is it? It's not human. Wow, what a very appropriate reaction you got there, James. As James exits the murder scene, he gets a distorted call from a woman telling him to meet her at the Rosewater Park. Snagging a key off a mangled corpse, and James makes his way to a nearby apartment to cut through to get to the park. Now, quick gush segment. I understand the hype now. So far, Silent Hill 2 has been so, so good. The city alone creates this ominous grand feeling of absolute freedom, but in the very next stroke, it just feels so confining. You're free to do whatever you like, to do whatever you please, but at the end of the day, each step you take is just as blind as the last. And also the jump scares are pretty damn good. You fucking died though, so that sucks. Let's go to the apartment. Let's get the apartment. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Alright, gush segment over. James goes into the apartment and explores the rooms, finding a flashlight, which also houses another monster a mannequin looking thing with legs as arms. 
As James shows that his fists are rated E for everyone, he finds another key, but gets pranked by a little girl. Ow! Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, wait! Damn it! I swear kids are fucking assholes, man. I swear. James then has to solve a clock puzzle, go on a roundabout way around the cell bars, and then he has to juke like 15 to 20 monsters just to get to the damn key. All because of one child. I am getting a bit ahead of myself though. James runs into Pyramid Head, who just stares at us. Like William Afton does with Foxy in that one minigame. Then we find him doing this? I'm not even sure what he's doing, but James makes sure that he, that he empties his entire clip into that man's dome. After he was done there, James hears puking and comes to find a man named Eddie with his ass hanging out. The conversation having no purpose to exist, James leaves and climbs through a window into the next section of the apartment. After looking around a bit, James comes across a cemetery girl. It's a long cutscene, but I, I think it's important. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm James. <sighs> Angela. Angela, okay. I don't know what you're planning, but there's always another way. Really? Same as me. It's easier just to run. Besides, it's what we deserve. No, I'm not like you. Are you afraid? I... I I'm sorry. It's okay. Did you find your mother? She's not anywhere. Did she live in this apartment building? I don't know. So, all you know is she lived in this town. What did you say? How do you know that? Well, I just figured, because this is where you're looking for her. How else would I know? Yeah... Am I right? I'm so tired. So, why did you come to this town anyway? I... Uh, I'm sorry. Did... Did you find the person you're looking for? Not yet. Her name's Mary. She's my wife. I, I'm sorry. It's okay. Anyway, she's dead. I don't know why I think she's here. She's dead? Don't worry. I'm not crazy. <laughs> At least, I don't think so. Uh, I've got to find my mama. Should I go with you? This town's dangerous. Now I know what you meant back there in the cemetery. I'll be okay by myself. Besides, I'd just slow you down. What about that? Will you hold it for me? Sure. No problem. If I kept it, I'm not sure what I might do. No! Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'd be bad. Please don't.
I swear, the more people we interact with in this game, the more plausible that nobody is real. I, I swear. Obtaining a knife and making his leave. James can't catch a break because the next thing he runs into is Pyramid Head again. But like, again, what is he doing to those mannequins? After shooting him like 20 times, Pyramid finally gets the idea and decides to leave on his own accord, allowing James to access the outside world once again. Coming across the bratty child that pranked James earlier, calling him stupid and that he actually never really loved Mary. It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who stepped on my hand. I don't know. Maybe I did. What's a little girl like you doing here anyway? Huh? Are you blind or something? What's that letter? None of your business. You didn't love Mary anyway. Wait! How do you know Mary's name? How the hell does she know Mary? Did James and Mary have a child on the way? Do they have a child? Pressing forward, James finally makes it to Rosewater Park and finds Mary. No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. My name is Maria. I don't look like a uh, ghost, do I? See? Feel how warm I am? You're really not Mary. I told you. I'm Maria. Sorry. I was confused. Where are you going? I'm looking for Mary. Have you seen her? Didn't you say she died? Oh yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place. And that's here? Anyway, I haven't seen her. Is this your only special place? I guess. The one on the lake? I wonder if it's still there. The Lakeview Hotel? Yeah, it's still there. So, the hotel was your special place, huh? I'll bet it was. Don't get so mad. I was just joking. Anyway, it's not that way. It's this way. You're coming with me? You were gonna just leave me? No, but... With all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here, and everyone else is gone. I look like... Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? <laughs> or maybe... You hated her. Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. I guess we have a companion now. Um, also, can we just stop here for a second? Let's go about everything that we found out so far. We know Silent Hill 2 is a psychological horror game that inspired the likes of Cry of Fear. So that being said, we can't trust everything we see. Are these people even real? It's hard to explain, but when James is talking to these people, they're not, we're, we're really not having a conversation. It's more so like they're waiting for us to stop talking and then they'll just interject and reply with a totally different thing. And I, I don't know how to explain it. And, and also the mannerisms, it's like we're in a Genjutsu or some shit. I just, sorry, I just wanted to get that off my chest real fast because I've been, you know, I've been playing the game, I've been watching the recordings and I'm just like very perplexed, very confused. And it's also, I think I want to get you guys in the mindset of questioning reality, um, this, you know, going forward so that we, we, that way we can 
connect the dots before actually doing research on the game. Anyways, the next place on James' list that could be their special place is at some hotel in the town. So with Maria on James' hip, they travel to a bowling alley? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know either. I'm, I'm, as, I'm as lost as you. Within the bowling alley, we come to find Eddie and the little girl talking. Eddie mentions he's running away from the cops, but he only ran because he was scared. James overhears the mention of Mary and interrupts the conversation as the little girl runs off again. Her name is Laura, by the way. I actually don't know when we found that out, but we, we know her name is Laura at this part. I just... I don't know. Anyway, James runs after her as Maria follows close behind. Laura climbs in between a tight space, so we're forced to go around, spawning this beautiful interaction. It's no good. It's locked. Like, like, bro, <laughs> I don't know if it's the time difference. I don't know if it's 2001. Like, you know, those, um, those situations where you're watching a film, like a really old film. Actually, yeah, this is a perfect, the perfect rant. I'm about to rant, y'all. Do you guys know, have you ever like watched a modern film, right? And you see their acting is a lot more, not visceral, but more verbal. You get to see it and, and hear it. Well, back in the day when it was silent films, have y'all ever sat down with y'all grandma, grandfather, grandparents and just watch the silent film where they just be out here goofy, like they're so goofy with their acting, but it's because they have to do that so that way that the, the, the emotion can come across. That's exactly what this fucking feels like. Him peeking over just felt so adolescent and it made me fucking laugh. Like her doing all this, and then like patting herself like where'd she get the pick from was it in her ass that was a big rant but it's just funny like i don't know if it's because it's an older game and that's why he's just like <laughs> the thing's just it's just so awkward I, I love every second of it man and then like bro you got a wife so what are you trying to look at like sir i have my theories but i won't say anything just yet okay but i have my theory james and maria catch up to laura but she's booking it for absolutely no reason. She runs into a nearby building. Within this building, we come across a written article. One that is very, very important and a driver to the main theme of this game. The potential for this illness exists in all people and under the right circumstances, any man or woman would be driven like him to the other side. The other side perhaps may be the best way to phrase it. After all, there is no wall between here and there. It lies on the borders where reality and unreality intersect. It is a place of both close and distant. Some say it isn't even an illness. I cannot agree with them. I'm a doctor, not a philosopher, or even a psychiatrist. But sometimes I have to ask myself this question. It's true that to use his imaginings are nothing but inventions of a busy mind. But to him, there simply is no other reality. Furthermore, he is happy there. So why? I ask myself, why in the name of healing him must we drag him painfully into the world of our own reality? So within this article is basically someone, I'm not really sure who is writing this, but he's talking about this patient who is happy in his delusions and he is having this moral dilemma where he's saying, in order for us to heal him, we need to drag him back to our reality. But what he is seeing is reality for him because it's very true. The things he sees are very true. So if he is happy in this delusion and his reality and his world, why must we drag him back to somewhere that would be cause him pain and be painful? It's the irony of healing someone just for them to be in more pain because of, you know, they're in the delusions. So it's just about blissful ignorance or things like that. We will come back, we will intercept back to this article if it's not clicking just yet, but 
I just wanted to read it out and um, put it in your guys' head. So let us continue. In this abandoned hospital, James would find the next creature of Silent Hill, a monster nurse which he quickly guns down, where Maria tells James that she's tired and pops some pills. She tells him not to worry, but she still pops the pills, huh? Hmm, Mary was sick, and she probably took pills for, for a moment there. Hmm. Like I said, I'm gonna save it for the end because right now I'm simply theorizing. Also, can we talk about how uncomfortable this bed looks? I mean, <laughs> I know this is off the script, but that motherfucker looks like poop and I know it smells crazy in there, bro. Jane leaves to go look for Laura and ends up on the rooftop finding an old diary. May 9th, rain. Stared out the window all day. Peaceful here. Nothing to really do. Still not allowed to go outside. May 10th. Still raining. Talked with the doctor a little. Would they have saved me if I didn't have a family to feed? I know I'm pathetic, weak, and not everyone can be the, can be strong. May 11. Rain again. The meds made me feel sick today. If I'm only better when I'm drugged, then who am I anyway? May 12th, rain as usual. I don't want to cause any more trouble for anyone, but I'm a bother either way. Can it really be such a sin to run instead of fight? May 13th, it's clear outside. The doctor told me I've been released, that I've, that I've got to go home. I, another diary where the theme is to run or fight. Similar to the article entry about facing reality or simply deluding yourself in blissful ignorance. As James was reading this, Pyramid Head gets his get back from earlier, knocking James off the roof. James is then forced to fight through waves of enemies as he continues his search, coming across a heavily locked box. After spinning, I kid you not, 30 minutes figuring this shit out. And there's nothing, nothing but a strand of hair inside? <laughs> this close, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm this close. But to be all, you know, in all fairness, the hair does come in handy, allowing us to get the elevator key. So I can't be too mad. And with the key, James finally catches up to Laura. You haven't even gotten a scratch on you. Why should I? Wait, wait! There's something I gotta get. Later, okay? But it's really important. What is it? A letter from Mary. Huh? I wanna go get it. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Is 
get in there? Yeah, in the back. What are you doing, Laura? It's further back, in the desk. Laura! What are you doing? Ha ha, I tricked you. Open the door, Laura. Why should I? I'm a liar, right? Want me to open it? Huh? Huh? Do ya? What's the magic word? Laura? Okay. I guess it won't open it. I think I'll just leave you like this. You snotty little brat! Open up! Why, you... you... Laura? You cut me! <laughs> this fucking kid, bro. This fucking kid, bro. I was about to say I was smiling because their relationship started looking like a father-daughter type of thing. And then she pulls this shit. James has to fight these floating bed monsters. Wait a minute. Don't they remind you of something we've seen before? Talk about inspired the inspiring, I swear. Anyway, James defeats the monsters and is dragged into another dimension where he bumps into Maria somehow. James! Mary? Oh, Maria. It's you. I thought you were... Sorry. Anyway, I'm glad you're alive. Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? You don't sound very happy to see me. I was almost killed back there! Why didn't you try to save me? All you care about is that dead wife of yours! I've never been so scared in my whole life! You couldn't care less about me, could you? No. James and Maria go forth searching for this little girl again, and because Maria for some reason feels responsible for Laura. However, she really doesn't last very long because she immediately gets stabbed in the back. Run it back, y'all. Your future Yuri, run that shit back. James is a fucking fraud, bro. He does not care about her at all. Look, peep the cutscene again. Run it back, peep it again. I'll slow it down for you. This dude made sure he entered first, man. First time playing this, I'm watching this cutscene like, wow, he's gonna get there. He's gonna open the door, pry it open, let her get inside first, and then he'll enter. Nah, he said me first, bitch. <laughs> then left her, and then left her to get impelled. It's insane. Anyway, back to the game. James seems pretty bummed about it, but remembers he still has a wife to find. The town of Silent Hill is now covered in darkness, and James continues to make his way to the hotel, coming across an ominous message along the way. If you really want to see Mary, you should just die. But you might be heading to a different place than Mary, James. Later, James comes across a hole that, and I quote, The hole's too dark. I can't see anything. And what does James do? He jumps down, of course. What else, what else is there to do? And at the bottom of the well, James hits the wall and a door appears like this is Dark Souls 3. Traversing through a sewage system because every game needs to have one. James comes across another deep abyss and decides to jump down once again. At the bottom, he finds Eddie, who seems to be a bit more unhinged than usual. Q. 
killing a person ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head. Pow. You, you killed him? But, but, but it wasn't my fault. He, he made me do it. Calm down, Eddie. Tell me what happened. That guy, he, he had it coming. I didn't do anything. He just came after me. Besides, he was making fun of me with his eyes, like that other one. Just for that, you killed him? What do you mean, just for that? Eddie, you can't just kill someone because of the way they looked at you. Oh yeah? Why not? Till now, I always let people walk all over me. Just like that stupid dog. He had it coming too. Eddie. <laughs> I was just joking, James. Eddie ends up leaving because he has somewhere else to be. Leaving James alone to figure out how to get out of this place. Taking an elevator down to the lower level, coming across Maria within a jail cell. Though, something's off about her. You're alive! Maria, I thought that thing killed you. Are you hurt bad? Not at all, silly. Maria? That thing, it stabbed you. There was blood everywhere. Stabbed me? What do you mean? It chased us to the elevator, and, James, and then... James, what are you talking about? Just before! Don't you remember? James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything, but you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? I'm not your Mary. So, you're Maria? I am. If you want me to be. All I want from you is an answer. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. Don't you want to touch me? I... don't know. Come and get me. I can't do anything through these bars. Okay. Stay right there. I'll be there soon. <laughs> I mean, there is a couple of things you could do through those bars, if you know what. While James was looking for a way to let Maria out, James stumbles upon Angela, finding a boss called Abstract Daddy, effectively saving her. Though her reaction isn't gratitude, but anger at anything and everything. Angela, relax. Don't order me around! I'm not trying to order you. So what do you want then? Oh, I see. You're trying to be nice to me, right? I know what you're up to. It's always the same. You're only after one thing! No, that's not true at all. You don't have to lie. Go ahead and say it. Or you could just force me. Beat me up like he always did. You only care about yourself anyway. You disgusting pig. Angela. Don't touch me!
Did... Did her father... Her? As a child? Did her mom watch? No one helped? Back to the game, James... I can't even read no more. Back to the game, James continues to look for a way out for Maria, but then finds Maria dead and bloodied in a room that resembles the one he left her in. Grieving over her body, like sitting beside a loved one in a hospital. There's obvious parallels here, but like I said, I'll get into them later. James continues his search, once again coming across Eddie, who has now killed even more people. Eddie? What are you doing? What does it look like? He always busted my balls. You fat, disgusting piece of shit. You make me sick! Fat ass, you're nothing but a waste of skin! You're so ugly, even your mama don't love you! Well, maybe he was right. Maybe I am nothing but a fat, disgusting piece of shit. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, ugly, pretty. It's all the same once you're dead! And the corpse can't laugh. From now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him! Just like that. Eddie, have you gone nuts? I knew it. You too. You're just like him, James. Hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James! James does not let this disrespect slide, introducing him to three Eddie? buckshots killing Eddie. Eddie? I... I killed a... a human being. A human being. Mary. Did you really die three years ago? I'm getting strong deja vu again. James, where is this hotel? You have been, you're, you're, you're rowing into a boat to get to it. Like I, I got proven wronged once. James makes it to the hotel and comes across Laura. Did I scare you? Yeah, you did. You're here to find Mary, aren't you, James? Well, have you? No. Is that why you're here, too? She's here, isn't she? If you know where she is, tell me. I'm tired of walking. I wish I knew. But she said it in her letter. What letter? Wanna read it? But don't tell Rachel, okay? Who's Rachel? She was our nurse. I took it from her locker. My dearest Laura, I'm leaving this letter with Rachel to give to you after I'm gone. I'm far away now, in a quiet, beautiful place. Please forgive me for not saying goodbye before I left. Be well, Laura. Don't be too hard on the sisters. And Laura, about James. I know you hate him because you think he isn't nice to me. But please, give him a chance. It's true he may be a little surely sometimes, 
and doesn't laugh much anymore. But underneath, he's really a sweet person. Laura, I love you like my own daughter. If things had worked out differently, I was hoping to adopt you. Happy 8th birthday, Laura. Your friend forever. Mary. Laura, how old are you? Um, I turned eight last week. So, Mary couldn't have died three years ago. Could, could she really be here? Is this the quiet, beautiful place she was talking about? Me and Mary talked a lot about Silent Hill. She even showed me all her pictures. She really wanted to come back. That's why I'm here. Maybe you'll get it if you see the other letter. The one, Mary. Huh? I must have dropped it. Laura. I gotta find it. Laura! Laura storms off in search of the letter and James follows suit. Obviously, he loses sight of her once again, but finds that videotape Maria was talking about in the earlier cutscene. And he watches the content. Are you taping again? Come on. <sighs> I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. You know what I heard? This whole area used to be a sacred place. I think I can see why. <sighs> it's too bad we have to leave. Please promise you'll take me again, James. <laughs> Let's stop there and take a breather, guys. The secrets are out of the bag. All this time, James was the one who killed Mary. But reality was going to show face one way or another. There's a lot of things I want to talk about and just rant about because I feel so emotionally invested in this game, but James' journey through Silent Hill is not over just yet. So let's, we owe it to James to finish this. James owes it to Mary to finish this. Mary's voice calls out to James through the radio. She states over the radio that she's nearby. James finds the source of the frequency and listens in on suppressed memories of the past. Mary's going to die. joking. I'm very sorry. But you're a doctor. It's your job to heal people. How can you just let her die? Please, calm down. As her doctor, I promise I'll do what I can. But there's still no effective treatment for her condition. How long does she have? I'm afraid I'm not sure. Three years at most. Perhaps six months. It's impossible to say with certainty. In the midst of all this chaos, James comes across Angela one last time. Mama, 
was looking for you. Now he's the only one left. Maybe then. Maybe then I can rest. Mama, why are you running away? You're not my mama. It's it's you. Oh. I... I'm sorry. Angela, no. Thank you for saving me. But I wish you hadn't. Even Mama said it. I deserved what happened. No, Angela, that's wrong. No, don't pity me. I'm not worth it. Or maybe you think you can save me. Will you love me? of me, heal all my pain. Hmm. That's what I thought. James. Give me back that knife. No, I... I won't. Saving it for yourself? Me? N no, I'd never kill myself. It's hot as hell in here. You see it too. For me, it's always like this. As things seem to get more and more tense, James can hear the scream of Maria. As he investigates, he sees some brutal torture taking place by the pyramid heads. I was weak. That's why I needed you. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. But that's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. Mary? What do you want, James? I, uh, I brought you some flowers. Flowers? I don't want any damn flowers. Just go home already. Mary, what are you saying? Look, I'm disgusting. I don't deserve flowers. Between the disease and the drugs, I look like a monster. Well, what are you looking at? Get the hell out of here! Leave me alone already! No use to anyone. I'll be dead soon anyway. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. It'd be easier if they'd just kill me. But I guess the hospital is making a nice profit off me. They want to keep me alive. Are you still here? I told you to go! Are you deaf? Don't come back! James! Mary?
When will you ever stop making that mistake? Mary's dead. You killed her. Maria? It's you. But I don't need you anymore. What? You must be joking. But I can be yours. I'll be here for you forever. And I'll never yell at you or make you feel bad. That's what you wanted. I'm different than Mary. How can you throw me away? I understand now. It's time to end this nightmare. No, I won't let you. You deserve to die too, James. Some twisted narrative divide. In order for James to fully come to terms with what he's done, he has to kill Mary. The Mary that he dreamed of in his delusion. Mary? <coughs> James. Forgive me. I told you that I wanted to die, James. I wanted the pain to end. That's why I did it, honey. I just couldn't watch you suffer. No. That's not true. You also said you didn't want to die. The truth is, I hated you. I wanted you out of the way. I wanted my life back. James, if that were true, then why do you look so sad? Mary? James. Please. Please do something for me. Go on with your life. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. waiting for you to come to see me. But you never do. And so I wait, wrapped in my cocoon of pain and loneliness. I know I've done a terrible thing to you, something you'll never forgive me for. I wish I could change that. But I can't. I feel so pathetic and ugly laying here, waiting for you. Every day I stare up at the cracks in the ceiling, and all I can think about is how unfair it all is. The doctor came today. He told me I could go home for a short stay. It's not that I'm getting better. It's just that this may be my last chance. I think you know what I mean. Even so, I'm glad to be coming home. 
I've missed you terribly. But I'm afraid, James. I'm afraid you don't really want me to come home. Whenever you come see me, I can tell how hard it is on you. I don't know if you hate me or pity me, or maybe I just disgust you. I'm sorry about that. When I first learned that I was going to die, I just didn't want to accept it. I was so angry all the time, and I struck out at everyone I loved most, especially you, James. That's why I understand if you do hate me. But I want you to know this, James. I'll always love you. Even though our life together had to end like this, I still wouldn't trade it for the world. We had some wonderful years together. <sighs> well, this letter has gone on too long, so I'll say goodbye. I told the nurse to give this to you after I'm gone. That means that as you read this, I'm already dead. I can't tell you to remember me, but I can't bear for you to forget me. These last few years since I became ill, I am so sorry for what I did to you, did to us. You've given me so much and I haven't been able to return a single thing. That's why I want you to live for yourself now. Do what's best for you, James. James, you made me happy. Wow. Just wow. I'm <laughs> I'm completely speechless. I'm not even going to lie to you. Monica Taylor Horgan, the actress for Mary and Maria, really sold the emotion in Mary's letter. Like no matter how many times I listen to it, as I edit these things back, I always have to listen to it and every single time I tear up, I cry. I, s I feel shivers go up my spine. I feel my hairs spike up. It's a powerful, powerful moment. Now with the full game fresh in our brains, I want to go back all the way to the beginning of the game 
and segment the video into four major parts, further explain each part and pointing things that I found interesting out. So one, I want to deep dive into what the red squares represent and what the monsters and the meanings behind them represent. Two, the characters and what they also represent for James and its narrative. Three, I want to dive into the process of events and deeper meaning of the events of Silent Hill. Four, I want to deep dive into the different endings and how they further the narrative's understanding. Let's talk about the monsters of Silent Hill first. So before we even get into what each monster means for James' journey, let's first talk about the creator of these abominations. Masashiro Ito, the art director of Silent Hill 2, said this in an interview. When I worked on designing creatures in Silent Hill 2, I really made them have meaning of appearance on the true reason of James' journey. Because they are something of illusions from his subconscious not only creatures to take score. And so with that in mind, let's first dive into the first monster. The lying figure is James' representation of how he viewed his dying wife as she slowly rotted away from her illness. If you actually look at the monster, you can see that it is wrapped. It is The skin is ravaged and it is mostly just skin and bones. It's supposed to look like an abomination and even going into the name of the monster called Lying Figure could possibly just go right back to Mary, how she was lying on her deathbed, slowly rotting away. The mannequin is a mangled mess of a body with tubes in the abdomen and fun fact, the first mannequin enemy you actually encounter is in the room with a flashlight with Mary's clothing on the mannequin stand. I don't know, I don't know if that's just like a little cool Easter egg or if it's trying to show James that this could represent another form of Mary. It's all up in the air. The next and third creature you meet in Silent Hill is called the Bobblehead Nurse. It is a creature in a nurse outfit who seems to always be in a constant state of suffocation. Obviously, we know that James smothered his wife to death, and this could also just be another callback to what James did to his late wife. The next is the Fresh Lips, aka Lustful Lips. It is basically a the first boss fight you actually go through in the game, and it's a monster that James has to fight off. It represents Mary's final days as she verbally abused James. This is a very common thing when people are on their deathbed, the reality of death being so imminent and the possibility being at an all time high makes people more verbally abusive. And I believe when you know Mary was on her deathbed, we hear it at the beginning or at the end of the game where she is just telling her Self, that she is hideous ugly and that she hates James that she wants him out of there and obviously if you listen to the whole thing which we will later down the road um she wants him to come back and it's all just very toxic right and this monster basically represents that it represents the 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 verbal abuse that James had to go through and his final days with Mary these are two ones that I grappled with even putting into the list, but prisoners. Prisoners can actually be found on the other side when you finally defeat the Fresh Lips. They're actually invisible enemies and just could just possibly be a metaphor for James, James being a prisoner of his own guilt and shame. And finally, and most importantly probably, uh, is Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head is the main antagonist of the game, also serves as James' subconscious as a way to punish him for his sins, tormenting him and killing the people he loves all over again. Also, what was he doing to those mannequins? I'm still not letting that go. Cause it one time is weird, two times is really, really weird. Was he being the mannequins? And if so, why? If this was supposed to be James inner in conscience. Did he marry? I don't think so. He doesn't seem like the person to do that, but I'm just saying I'm bringing up things that I will never understand because, you know, I can look it up, but everybody has their own thought processes. 
And another honorable mention that, that I skipped over purposely and that I will later get into because it segues perfectly into the next part of the thing that I wanted to dive into is Abstract Daddy. As I said, this is a nice segue. Since we'll be talking about Abstract Daddy, we first might as well talk about Angela. The first person you meet in the game, she's an easy to start a woman looking for her mother. She has titled tendencies and tends to self-loathe. She is also the only other character in the game that has a monster specifically for her. As I mentioned earlier, Abstract Daddy. And this is for a reason. Angela is meant to parallel James so us players can understand what's happening internally within James. Due to certain endings and one we'll get into later, James is shown to be capable of taking his own life. Furthering the parallels in the fire scene, James mentions how hot it is and Angela replies with a question. Oh, you can see it too? That's how I always feel. I believe that this is one represents inner turmoil and deep rooted pain and not to mention James and Angela were both abuse victims even if they were different forms of abuse the result is the same creating an abstract daddy only Angela can truly see what it is just like how James looks at his rotting wife as one of those lying figures and the two of them do look extremely similar. Now with Angela out of the way, let's now dive into Eddie. Let's talk about him. What's his deal? He starts off scared and relatively friendly, then ends up being a psychomaniac killer, killing people just for the way they looked at him. Well, doesn't that sound familiar? James is that exact person. He hated the way Mary would look at him and talk to him, subsequently breaking and killing her. Eddie serves as a blatant wake-up call to James for how evil his actions truly were. Because when James does kill Eddie, he despairs that he killed a human being, which is ironic considering he has already done that. Also a big thing Eddie would say is it wasn't my fault or he had it coming, similar to how James started by lying that he killed Mary to end her suffering, but grew past that and confessed to himself and to Mary that he did it because he hated her. He did it out of the selfishness of his heart. Now with Eddie out of the way, the most questionable. Let's talk about Laura. The biggest question that surrounds her was, at least for me, was Laura created by the town to guide and torment James? And my quick answer is no, but let me explain. Silent Hill, the town is supernatural, so the things that James are seeing are in fact real. They're just sourced from his subconscious. Without getting too deep into the town of Silent Hill, and also I kinda didn't want to because um, I don't know anything outside of Silent Hill 2. I don't know 1, 3, 4, etc, etc. And so I kinda kept this part a little vague just for my own enjoyment for the future installments when I play the games. Um, but this is as much as I could gather without spoiling myself. Silent Hill serves to punish those who are guilty, feeding on their guilt and doubts, trying to further delude them, but also giving them a chance to recognize their wrongs. That's why everyone in Silent Hill 2 seems to be seeing different things, because they all consider monsters something different. Eddie views humans as monsters for their judging eyes. Angela views her father and her brother as the monsters for the sexual abuse. And Maria serves as a stand-in for Mary, so she views the same things as monsters as James does. But Laura, she's not guilty. She's an innocent child. So most likely she doesn't see any monsters. That's why her interactions can come off as kind of odd given the circumstances and that's why also when she goes to these dangerous places she's not even having a scratch on her or when she does a cruel joke like locking James in a room it could have just been a simple adolescent joke where he she put him in the room all by himself in darkness 
but not realizing there was actually a monster trying to kill James because she can't see that. Silent Hill doesn't deem her as someone needing of punishment. Plus in the ending, Laura is able to leave that town of Silent Hill, just like James can. So to summarize all that I said, Laura is meant to contrast the murder, the <gasps> and the guilt factor with her innocence. And finally, and probably most prevalent, Maria. It's not hard to see that she's meant to be a stand-in for Mary, as I said earlier. From Jane's point of view, Maria is just someone who looks like his wife and tags along. Slowly but surely, he begins to care for her, especially after she blows up on him for leaving her and not protecting her. And in some twisted fate, once James begins to care for her, she's cruelly taken away. Maria is the guilt of James, created by Silent Hill to show James the things he's lost and remind him the pain that he caused. Snapping at him every time he calls her Mary because Silent Hill wants to torment James for his actions. Though her importance being too great to deny, she's not really in the story that much as the other characters. So when she is around, she's not really Maria, at least the one that we know, but Silent Hill's version of Mary. I know that's confusing, but it'll like make a lot more sense when we dive into the game's extra story, born from a wish. In this scenario, we follow the point of view of Maria, getting her perspective on things and just how powerful Silent Hill truly is, creating a being filled with complex emotions, all to torment James further. When I woke up, I was all alone. Everyone's gone. Is it because of those monsters? What do I do now? Do I fight and live? Or do those monsters get me? I don't have any reason to go on living. But... But I'm scared to die. I'm so afraid of pain. Should I... run away? I want to find... somebody. I don't like being alone, but, but is there anyone left alive? In this sub-scenario, this takes place before Maria meets up with James. She awakes in a room all alone, confused on her purpose and wanders the street, looking for a reason to either live or die. Spending much of her time in a mansion owned by Ernest Baldwin, one of Silent Hill's wealthiest residents, and has also been dead for quite some time. It's widely believed that he took his own life after his daughter's passing. Maria being conjured by Silent Hill, which is indirectly conjured Ernest to tell Maria about James, just shows how supernaturally powerful Silent Hill really is.
James. Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? My name is Maria. It was a bit confusing, but I ran across a comment that summed up Maria's character up rather nicely. Yeah, this was on a Reddit thread from 11 years ago by Bacon Pants. Um, and he was replying to a person who found the sub scenario to be that of a bit too confusing and, as they said, useless. But this is what they said, at least the ending part is what I'm going to be reading. They said, I'm sorry you found the sub scenario pointless, but I think its purpose was to give the player insight into Maria's perspective. After meeting James, she appears to be a seductive woman, at times taunting or screaming at him, and sometimes clinging and weeping. However, in Born From A Wish, she is none of these things, merely a sad and lonely person who is unaware of her purpose. I think seeing her this way makes her character much more interesting and tragic, considering all the terror and abuse she receives so James can recover his memory and resolve his personal issues. I was planning on talking about James Sunderland on a deeper level, but I think it would be smart to save it for the end of the video. So let's actually go back to the end of the game. This isn't the end of the story, nor is it the only ending you can get in Silent Hill. There are actually six endings in total in Silent Hill 2, though we're going to give it the near ultimate treatment and really only focus on specific endings. How you achieve these endings depends on how you choose to play the game. You have the leaving ending, you have the Maria ending, the water ending, and the rebirth ending. So you guys already saw the leave ending where it showcases James simply leaving the town of Silent Hill. This is generally thought to be the good ending, leaving it as open-ended as possible so that we can get our happily ever after. Um, and to achieve this, you basically need to spend very little time actually playing the game. And theoretically, you just need to speed run through the game, not fighting the enemies, not listening to the dialogue. You just speed run all the way to kill Mary and then you fucking leave. To obtain Maria's ending, you need to pretty much spend more time with Maria throughout the duration of the game, hovering over her body as she sleeps and protect her from any attacks from the monsters of Silent Hill. James, I've been waiting. Mary. I'm sorry it took so long. Didn't you want to see me? Yes, I wanted to see you. Even an illusion of you. That's why I came here. It's not true, is it? You killed me. I couldn't watch you suffer. Don't make excuses, James. <laughs> I know I was a burden on you. You must have hated me. You killed Mary again? That wasn't Mary. Mary's gone. That was just something I... Maria? Maria? What, James? I want you. 
I want you with me. Are you sure? Come on. Let's get out of here. What about Mary? It's okay. I have you. Personally, this genuinely seems like the bad ending, for me at least. Maria was born from a wish. Wish? Wow. Maria was born from a wish. So choosing to stay with Maria just means he further deludes himself, never really coming to grips with what he's done. Though within the game, we find many articles talking about that same thing. So is it really wrong to run? Is it really a sin to stay happy within your own reality? Well, that's up for you to decide. Next is the water ending. In order to get this ending, you must examine Angela's knife and listen to the hallway dialogue in its entirety. Mary? <laughs> Wrong again. Mary's dead. You killed her. Maria? Maria, I'm done with you. What do you mean? But I can be yours. I'll be here for you forever. And I'll never yell at you or make you feel bad. That's what you wanted! Now I understand. The problem is, you're not married. No, James. I won't let you. I'll never let you have your Mary back. Mary? James. <coughs> Forgive me. I told you that I wanted to die, James. I wanted the pain to end. That's why I did it, honey. I just couldn't watch you suffer. <laughs> No, that's not the whole truth. You also said that you didn't want to die. The truth is, part of me hated you for taking away my life. You killed me, and you're suffering for it. It's enough, James. Mary? Uh, James! Now I understand the real reason I came to this town. 
I wonder, what was I afraid of? Without you, Mary, I've got nothing. Now we can be together. Similar to the leave ending, James confides in Mary and finally owns up to the truth behind his actions. Instead of living on like Mary wanted to, he decides life isn't worth living with the things he's done. James, willing to ignore that text, that ominous text that he got way back when, saying that he may or may not end up in hell rather than heaven, he takes that gamble, even if it doesn't end up in the same place as her, taking his car and driving into the water. Finally, the rebirth ending. This one is a bit odd for me. <laughs> Personally, I didn't really take the time to um, get this ending, beat this ending right here. But apparently, in order to get this ending, you need to collect some things like the white castle and some books for a ritual, right? And once you do, this happens. James. Maria, I'm finished with you. What? I'm what she wanted. Mary's dead. Don't you understand? She's not coming back. But I can be yours. I'll be here for you forever. I'll never hurt you like she did. So why don't you want me? Because you're not Mary. Without Mary. I just can't go on. Oh, James. Come on, James. You must be joking. Mary, you look so peaceful. Forgive me for waking you. But without you, I just can't go on. I can't live without you, Mary. This town, Silent Hill. The old gods haven't left this place. And they still grant power to those who venerate them. Power to defy even death. I'll be real, this ending really just drives home the powers and the lore of Silent Hill, and unfortunately I know nothing past Silent Hill 2 nor do I know the comics or the movies, and because I just want to dive deeper into the games and my other installments and videos, so I'm trying to not be too spoiler heavy as I'm doing research on these things. So if I happen to, you know miss something or i missed the importance of this scene please let me know in the comment sections i am i'm terribly sorry but there were just some times where i was like i'm not going to be able to know what this means am i now with all the endings thoroughly explored there is one damning detail that will segue us right into my final section mary's body was in the car the entire time 
Let me explain. Throughout the game, James leads the player to believe that Mary's been long dead now. Three gears, he states. But within the final twist of the game, James is wearing the same clothes he's currently wearing. Also, within the ending, Rebirth, where did he get Mary's body? In the water ending, why does he choose to drive into the water? If James was searching for his wife and Mary was in the car, what the hell was happening to James? Well, James, after killing his wife, is going through something called maladaptive defense mechanism. This psychological phenomenon obviously varies in severity. Maladaptive defensive mechanism? <laughs> I don't like saying that. I'm just gonna say M. I'm just gonna call it MDM. How about that? MDM could range from a person simply suppressing their emotions, or it could range to situations such as James, who completely forgets the traumatizing memories, deluding themselves into a false reality. James, before the game's events, killed his wife back home. We know that Mary was permitted to go home for a short while, so James couldn't have killed her in the hotel nor the hospital since that was within Silent Hill. I think James smothered Mary, obviously, and in a shocked and dazed state put her in the backseat of his car, drove to Silent Hill, took a breather in the restroom as he collects himself to find his missing wife who had died to him three years ago when she first became ill. With that revelation, looking at the events of the game somehow become even darker. James leaves his decomposing wife as he goes around their special place killing subconscious versions of Mary, only to do one of four things when learning the truth. Leave her to rot in the car as he leaves, deludes himself into an ideal version of Mary, commit side alongside the dead wife effectively undergoing a murder side and use that decomposing body as an attempt of some kind of rebirth none of these endings have a happy ending and i believe that's by design james is an evil sick man we go throughout the entire game you know Feeling all forms of of emotions with James, we, we meet disgust, pity, sadness, anger, happiness, bittersweet, betrayal. And I believe that's the magic of Silent Hill 2. Its narrative is a emotional roller coaster. James is by default an evil, sick man but you can't help but root for him, to, for him to come to grips with what he's done, for the murder, for the sins, for the evil that he's become. He simply killed someone out of selfishness of his heart. He doesn't deserve a happy ending. That's the reality. Silent Hill 2 is about the inevitability of facing the brutal reality. For Eddie, he will forever be remembered as a weak man, a weak individual. For Angela, she will forever be plagued by the pain someone else has caused her. Maria will never, ever be Mary. And Laura, she now has to live life without Mary. Deluding yourself to a false reality will never be permanent. Just as the doctors explain their jobs to nurse people back to that painful reality, James now has to face that brutal reality and forever live on by his sins that he'll carry for the rest of his life. Silent Hill 2 is reigned as one of horror's all-time greats and it's for good reason it's not it's not the monsters that scare you it's how goddamn relatable that game can be it's just a
it's unfair to call it a game because at this point it's it's an experience. The game manages to do everything from scare you to make you cry, to make you feel angry, to make you think. It does everything. Everything. And it's impossible to not see the ripples that this game has affected on people's lives now. You have games like Cry of Fear that took all of these inspirations from it. You've got games like Alan Wake that took obvious inspirations from it. And the more that I play it, the more things I've seen. Silent Hill 2 really does teach you about humanity. At the end of the day, Silent Hill 2 is just about no matter how good you are, anyone is capable of evil. James is a good man. We have seen it. He goes, he helps Angela. He truly wants to just help people. And yet, he's capable of murder. He's capable of killing his wife. He's capable of an extremely selfish act. If I had to say one thing that I always say at the end of these videos, whether it's talk to somebody or confide in a person or, or, or face reality, it could be all these things. But I think the thing that I got out of Silent Hill was be true to yourself. Like what James failed to do and this is why I believe this is a cautionary tale, but what James failed to do was to adapt. James could not adapt to the situation. He kept living in the past. He wanted Mary to be good. He wanted Mary to be what she used to be. He yearned for what they used to have. And while looking back, he was stumbling forward. He didn't know what he was doing until he had already done it. And so I say this to say, it's impossible to move forward and know where you're going if you're always looking back. It's good to reminisce on the good times. It's good to revisit some happy moments in your life. It's good to do these things, it is. But do not be jealous of your own time don't look back at old pictures of your old friend groups old pictures of relationships and do not get jealous do not say what if just reminisce about the good times and move forward otherwise you'll end up like james doing something that'll hurt your loved ones and hurt yourself even more. Thanks.